Yes. Well, excuse me, princess. I think I'm gonna be in frame this time. I get very weird about Legend of Zelda stuff. I'm gonna get deep in this video, just deal with it. I tried to find my Tangle plushie to like put in the background, but I couldn't find him, so now you get curled. I'm not ready. <laughs> everyone, it's Kat of Catwoman Cosplay. If you're new here, welcome home. And if you've been here before, welcome back. So if my last video wasn't enough indication, I am a huge Zelda fan. Come on, you don't have to do this to me. Oh! I am so excited for Tears of the Kingdom if, you know, my last video wasn't indication enough. All jokes aside, thank you guys for hyping me up in that video and for sharing your theories and for just really showing me the love after that video. I was kind of giving up on YouTube and then I guess I'm a Zelda YouTuber now and I could not be happier. So a little bit of history on my Zelda obsession. I bought my Switch at the end of my junior year of high school and the first game I bought with it was Breath of the Wild. I played it nonstop for two weeks and never beat it. I still have not beat Zelda Breath of the Wild. It's just sitting there. I run around all the villages and I run around and I have all the divine beasts as of yesterday conquered, but I have not defeated a Ganon because I am so, so, so worried that when I defeat Ganon, and I know this is true, all the villains will go away and I'll have nothing to do. And I really just am really sad that the story has to end. Like, I know my girlfriend Zelda is over there fighting for her life, but, but let me have some fun. <laughs> Zelda, it's hot girl summer for Link today. Anyway, this video is about my theories on Tears of the Kingdom because we are T minus, I think, four days away. I am so excited. I don't know why it took me this long to film this video, but I really, really wanted to make sure I had my thoughts in order. Spoiler alert, I still don't have my thoughts in order. So after talking to a few people at GameStop, shout out to Bethany, I think I have all my ideas. So this is going to be a very convoluted video. Good luck. My biggest thought on Tears of the Kingdom is that we are going to get some indication that Link does speak to the people he loves. Um. It was revealed in the diary that Zelda wrote in Breath of the Wild that Link is only selectively mute. And I think that's really cool because, you know, like I have some friends who are nonverbal and stuff like that, but they can talk, they just only talk when needed. If we kind of delve into that, maybe we see him saying something to Zelda in the past in a memory. I feel like we're gonna have a lot of memories too in Tears of the Kingdom, just because I feel like there's a lot of things that happened before the Calamity and during the Calamity that we didn't get to see, and I'm really interested to see what went down. Like, I know Age of Calamity kind of opened up a whole can of worms. It was a great game, don't get me wrong, I loved it, but it wasn't canon. So there are still a lot of things that we have to go back and see, okay, did this happen? Did this happen? There are still a lot of gaps we need filled. Anyway, back to Link. Here we're gonna see Link like whispering in Zelda's ear, doing something besides yeah, yeah, hoo. He would just whisper into Zelda's ear or like laugh at Sidon or something like that. That would be amazing. I just think he's so cute. Little Link the Twink, like let him be happy, let him laugh, let him talk to his girlfriend. Okay. I just think that Link and Zelda are in love. I think they've been in love forever. I think no matter how many times they're reincarnated, I think that they are destined to fall in love in one way or another, be that a platonic love or a romantic love. There is so much substance that happens in Breath of the Wild and Age of Calamity that it makes my heart do these palpitations. When like Zelda is like looking at Link and is just like, <laughs> like in my video that comes out Friday, I'm just like, oh my gosh, we have to make Zelda the most bratty person to Link, because that's how she was. Like, she's just like, oh, I never got what I wanted, so you can't either. Then they fall in love, and I think that's like really cute, like enemies to lovers trope. Like, oh my gosh, my fanfiction heart. I have an AO3 account. I'm never gonna reveal what it, what it is, I think. I have a few enemies to lovers fanfictions on there, and this kind of scratches that itch. We're gonna have some scenes in this game. That scene of Link reaching out to Zelda while they're falling off the cliff in the trailer killed me. He drops the master sword! Like, you know, the thing that's supposed to seal away the the evil that they're supposed to be fighting at the moment? Well, he's just like, oh, my girlfriend's falling. Throws sword, starts running. Why did we call it Zilink? Like, that's like the worst ship name ever. Why can't I be like one of the Ruby ship names that, that are like Bumblebee, which is Blake and Yang, or uh, what's that one called Red Refrigerator? Oh, ah! 
I also think this is going to be a big callback to especially a few games that have the redead. I think we're going to get the underworld in this game because we've already explored the entirety of the map for Hyrule in this instance of Zelda, even though it's in all three timelines. Blah, 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 blah. Like, we aren't getting into that today. I'll get into that later. It would be so cool if we got to explore a new area, and I feel like the best way they can do that is with the underworld and the redead. Like, people think that the redead are coming. I'm not sure if they are. I hope so because like the redead are creepy as heck. I love a good creepy Zelda story. Like I've heard this is darker than Majora and if it's really darker than Majora, <laughs> let's put it like this. I want to be scared. I want to be so scared that my boyfriend, no, not my boyfriend, my fiance now, that my fiance has to sit next to me and hold me while I scream because redead are currently killing me and Sidon as we're on our buddy journey together. Here's what I think. I think that lady is an incarnation of Zelda, like some incarnation of Zelda. I don't think she's Hylia. I don't think she's a Sheikah, but she's wearing the same dress as Zelda and she has tears on her face like Zelda does whenever she's like, save me Link. Um, I think she's an incarnation of Zelda and oh, she's beautiful. Here's my most like controversial opinion, I think. I don't think Ganondorf is necessarily bad in this one. Like, I think it's gonna be a whole nature versus nurture story. And I don't know if Ganondorf, if resurrected and didn't have the childhood that he had previously, if he would really be that bad. This big thing, and it's used a lot in a lot of my fan fictions. It's an, it's an ancient proverb. It's, um, the child unloved by the village will burn it down to feel its warmth. Ganondorf was unloved by the village, so he burned it down. But there is no village in this sense. He was just revived and he's like, where am I? Who am I? What's going on? He might even like help Link and Zelda reunite because even though he, Ganon is destined to be the villain, Ganondorf necessarily is not. And I know that's a very controversial opinion. Nature versus nurture thing, how I see it. Uh, I do believe that the actual villain of this game is probably a variant of Demise. Not the actual Demise, but the variation of Demise. Which leads me to my last two points, which are probably the most controversial now that I think about it. One, I think this game is the second in a trilogy. I think that it goes Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, blah blah blah. It feels like the second in a trilogy. I don't know how they're gonna pull that off because like it took them like 18,000 years to like, it took them a whole calamity to like literally went through COVID to make a new game. And I kept getting pushed back and I'm, I hope that it's good. I really hope that Tears of the Kingdom is good. I feel like Breath of the Wild deserves a third game to really wrap up the timeline, which leads me to my second theory is that this is the end of the Zelda timeline. The Link and Zelda of this timeline, which bridges all the timelines of Breath of the Wild, are the last Link and Zelda, meaning that this Ganon is the last Ganon and therefore is demise. It makes me so emotional almost that these could be the last Link and Zelda because like we started up way with Skyward Sword. There are so many Links, get it Links, ha ha ha, uh, to Skyward Sword that we've been seeing in the trailers that link it to Tears of the Kingdom, that it makes me think that maybe even the Zelda who is reaching out her hand to Link in that one trailer is going to be the Zelda from Skyward Sword. And that way they it goes full circle. They wrap it up. Like, that makes me so emotional. <laughs> Other than that, I feel like, I just think it will be beautiful, no matter what. I love Zelda, I love everything to do with it. There's never been a Zelda game that I have not enjoyed, uh, that I've played. Like I've watched Minish Cap, not so sure about that one, but I really have enjoyed every game that I've played of Zelda and it has given me so much hope. These people can find each other in every lifetime. It gives me hope that I will find my friends and my family and my fiance in every lifetime. Whatever they put out this time, be it darker than Majora's Mask or lighter than Minish Cap. Welcome home. Uh, we finally got a new Zelda game and I can't wait to play it with you guys. And it's dangerous to go alone, so stay weird and stay safe.